Teardown time. This is a Philips LED light bulb. It's the MR16 with a 12 volt input, a 500 lumen output. Let's uh, see how it performs and then let's tear it down. So it's an all metal construction here and uh, of course you can see there's four emitters. And it looks like there's a lensing structure on top. Let's see if we can pry this off and uh, get below it. No, I'm sure we can. Okay, so four LEDs and it uh, looks like it's uh, probably a metalized substrate and it looks like a screw is retaining the rest of the electronics. So Let's see if we can take that off and uh, sort down what we're seeing. So just looking straight down here, we can see 4316, which meant that the circuit board itself was made late in 2016. I bought the bulb uh, first quarter of uh, 2017, so fairly slow sell-through uh, on this one. Uh, obviously the four LEDs, it, it looks like the emitter's also been glued to remove the screw, but that wasn't quite enough. And of course we can see the voltage is coming in. It looks like I'm going to have to try prying this off. Well, this is interesting, a uh, cost-saving move going on here. These emitters have always been historically made out of uh, aluminum back substrates because they conduct heat very well. You can see Philips going for a more cost-effective approach here. A very heavy metal plated layer, but when it's prying up, you can clearly see the uh, the weave of the fiberglass below that. So um, fiberglass material, of course, is cheaper than aluminum, so um, that's why they're doing that. Interesting. That's uh, quite different than the uh, structure I've seen in their previous bulb four years ago. All right, well, there was another screw hiding under the glue, and then I unsoldered the two connections, and now the assembly comes apart into two pieces. Uh, this obviously holding the uh, power supply electronics, and uh, it looks like it's been potted. Uh, the potting compound uh, spreads heat out in the components, giving them a better service life, and uh, it can also reduce noise if you've got magneto restriction in your transformers or capacitors. They can sing a bit if they uh, uh, vibrate, and this helps dampen that sound that some people find objectionable. So this is a very different uh, type of assembly than what they were doing four years ago where they actually had a fan under here to blow heat. They've dramatically simplified the assembly for this 500 lumen bulb. Let's see if we can kick this out of the housing and uh, inspect the circuit board. Okay, I just sawed the uh, metal case in half as you can see so you can pry it apart and get a better sense of the uh, circuit board inside. The epoxy fortunately is reworkable. It actually can be peeled off these assemblies relatively easily which is a real bonus because sometimes the uh, epoxy can be very hard to remove indeed. Uh, most of what has to be done now is just simply uh, pick work and uh, slowly but certainly uh, moving off the epoxy. Let me uh, come back uh, once I get this all peeled off and I'll show you the circuit board with the parts on it. Well all right here's the circuit board I was looking straight down upon it. The uh, two pins here are the 12 volt connector back to the uh, socket of the bulb. A fuse here for safety reasons, an inductor, a through-hole capacitor and that'll be for smoothing. You can see for some reason they put it through some heat shrink before they impotted it. Not entirely sure why. A uh, common theme in uh, Philips bulbs, you never seem to let the solder uh, r run through the via. Uh, that's a kind of a workmanship issue for me. Some high rel uh, reliability electronics the guidelines always demand the solder goes through the via barrel for better um, service life, but they don't seem to do that. Uh, two inductors, of course, here. And if we flip it over, um, we have the four diodes providing a bridge rectification because it's always uh, AC in on these bulbs. Uh, and then it uh, looks like a one integrated circuit, fairly sophisticated in terms of number of pins. We'll have to de-encapsulate that to see what's uh, going on there. The markings don't uh, track back to any particular vendor. Okay, well, let's take a more detailed look at the actual controller IC. Uh, here it is de-encapsulated. Uh, large golden areas on the right probably uh, are covering up some large transistor structures. Um, and uh, a surprising amount of transistors on this one. Uh, no surprise, of course, a very modern part. Uh, the only identifier I can find on it is a RT627A, uh, but that seems to be a dead end when I search for it. I can't find any uh, particular supplier for it, but um, it certainly does look like a very modern controller. Okay, flicker test. There's a solar cell here. Obviously, the bulb's shining upon it. The rest of the room's lights are out. And that gives me a sense of whether or not there's a flicker in the bulb. And what we're seeing, of course, is just a DC output. No AC component to speak of. So this bulb has no flicker. Uh, no matter what uh, the setting of the dimmer happens to be, the bulb is, it claims to be dimmable, and it certainly does seem to make that uh, claim correct. So um, both the dimmability and the actual flicker performance seem excellent. So quite straightforward, obviously, the emitter array, the lensing, and the circuit board. Um, the older Philips bulb, I've got quite a few of them in my house, actually. I'm slowly replacing them. Uh, it was about four years old. Uh, this is the, the previous approach actually had a fan in it, and you can see, of course, they've removed the fan from the new assembly. 
Um, and then, of course, did fail a lot in the bulbs I had. The fan had stopped working, and the LEDs got very hot, or the circuit board got very hot. Anyway, something happened, and they, they started to fail. That wasn't too unexpected. So the removing the fan, of course, improves reliability. Uh, in terms of heat, I presume what's happened here is that the LEDs have become more efficient, so they've been able to uh, dispense with the fan. So it'll be interesting. Uh, basically, what has happened now is I've replaced all these bulbs, which lasted about four years, uh, before about half of them stopped working. Uh, with uh, these uh, uh, new ones and I'll see how long they last and see if they have a similar life or if they've compromised quality in some way.